Oh yeah, guys. Look at that beauty. Time for another ZJ video. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today I'm out here with my 1998 Jeep Grand Cherokee. You know him as the General Grievous. And right now I'm gonna give you all the things I love and I hate about this ZJ. All right, guys. So you're probably watching this video right now because you are ZJ fans as it is. And if you've been following my channel, you'll know that I did a love and hate video about XJs, particularly that way down over there. Well, you guys know I don't hate anything about Jeeps, really. I got to pick them apart because I'm a Jeep owner and we've all been through it. We know what's good and what's bad about these vehicles. So now it's my turn and I'm gonna pick apart this ZJ. You guys know I love this thing. Quick backstory, I got this baby for free in 2019. It was about March and I was approached by my brother's brother-in-law. He said he was gonna scrap it and asked me if I needed parts from it. So <laughs> I said, uh, I'll just take the whole thing. So I got a free Z. It had been in a collision I rebuilt the front end, and it's beautiful, and I love it. So let's dig in. All right, starting in the engine bay. Here we go. We're going to pick this thing apart slowly. I, I could judge this thing because I know it, and I love it. If you judge somebody you don't know, you might get punched in the face. But since me and the General Grievous have a great relationship, I'm going to start making fun of it. So <laughs> this, this washer fluid tank is crazy because it's got uh, a little bubble right here. I don't know if this is for extra volume. Let's go find out. Here we go, we're gonna add some more of the blue. And uh, let's see what happens. Hopefully I proportioned enough for myself. All right, here we go. Yeah, we're overflowing right here, baby. Look at that. This thing is at max capacity and this whole bubble is still empty right there. Please tell me why this was designed this way. Did the engineers consult physicists that said they needed a certain volume of air for pressure in this thing? Or else the motors wouldn't work? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Somebody please let me know. But case closed on number one. And here we go. On a positive note, I really love the layout of this engine bay. Uh, we got the 4.0 in here. This Jeep was incredible. It had the solid tried and true 4.0. It also had the 5.2 V8 with some power. And in 98, this thing blew our minds with the 5.9. The good old Niner in here broke all the records. Fastest SUV on the planet for many years, but this is fantastic. Great layout over here. Uh, I love how the battery is squared up with the Jeep. Uh, something just rubs me wrong about the XJ battery being sideways. That's because there's no room in the XJs, but this is designed pretty well and uh, I love it. And honestly, my favorite part about this engine bay is this cowl area right here. And of course, these hinges is aces holding up the hood with no hood support needed this is the best i love it all right let's get in this zj and right away i will show you another thing i hate about this zj i hate these hinges these hinges wore out so bad that the door was just hanging off <laughs> well that's not good and I can't really blame ZJ specifically because most vehicles 25 years and older will have saggy door hinges. That was kind of a pain to fix, but I do think something that is more specific to this ZJ was this door striker area. This thing is horrible. Oh my, this is cracked right here. This weak part of the door just crumbles. Anybody who has a ZJ with a saggy door probably has a smashed up striker area. This thing I got on Amazon. This plate is the fix. Put this in, made a video about it. Hope you enjoyed it. So check out that video, fix your ZJ, and it could close like this. <laughs> so that is fixed. That is another thing I hate about the ZJ. But moving in, to another thing I love about the ZJ, these seats, these comfortable seats. This whole interior 
is just sexy. It's plush. That's one of the best interiors I've ever sat in. So let's move it inside. All right, so the comfortability, was that a word? The comfortableness, the comf comfortability of this ZJ is second to none. Great interior, it's awesome. But one of the most outstanding features that I absolutely love is the heated seat button right in here. This little switch, if you flip it on, it will stay on. So as long as the Jeep is on, your seats will be heated. Unlike the XJ, where you press that button, if you shut the car off, the heated seat will go off. Um, this stays on as long as this button's on. And the benefit of that feature is if you have an auto start or remote start on a cold day, if this button remains up, you start your car from your bedroom, the seats will start heating immediately. Now, if you have a remote start on an XJ, like I do as well, you can start your car, you will come into it, your seats will be ice cold, and you'll have to press that little button right over here. Um, this has an excellent design. I would love to carry this type of feature over in all my vehicles, so I don't have to press that button every time I get in. I guess new vehicles, they just automatically sense how cold it is and will heat your seats as soon as you press that little key start button, but uh, this is 1993 technology and they knocked it out of the park. I absolutely love that switch. All right, I'm sitting here roasting. Let me open up these windows. All right, windows are down and let me crack this sunroof. Oh, this way. As I sit here sweating in this ZJ with this sunroof cracked open in the vent position, I hate this sunroof. And again, I don't know if it's just the, uh, the era or the age that this was made in, but this sunroof sucks at 25 years old. I'm sure, uh, sorry, I'm sweating. I'm sure that when it was made, uh, it was great for the first decade or so, but when this thing fails, it's a nightmare. I just filmed a video of me attempting to fix this sunroof. I actually had to replace the whole thing because all the plastic pieces in here, I don't know if you can see it, I'm sorry, but uh, this track, this whole track is plastic and sun plus plastic equals brittle. And if this thing gets jammed up or stuck and you try to move this sucker, the plastic just shattered. <laughs> I do not have time for this. So the track was busted and I got this new or replacement sunroof from somebody on Facebook. Uh, it sat in my garage for about two years. I finally just put it in. It's almost gonna be three years and a couple months since this was busted. I put it in and the sunroof didn't work. Nope. I did some digging and I found out there was some major manufacturer flaws in this thing. And that's happening on both sides. It needs the tension of this tube on this bracket in order to push the whole window closed. So I gotta lube the track and make some more friction up here. The friction on this has to be greater than the track so it can push closed. Holy crap. Now, I'm not sure the technical terms for these things, but the tube that holds the coil that gets pushed by the motor, which slides this thing on its track, well, the tube is held in place by these, I don't know what to call them, flanges, but whatever they use to mount that thing to hold it solid, it looked like a dab of JB Weld. Now, 25 years, uh, that stuff, that stuff just broke. And when you open this thing, it basically ejected the uh, the coil or whatever. The regulator ejected it right out from where it's supposed to be held in firm. And uh, that just bounces back and forth and it makes this thing not slide. So I fixed it. I fixed it as best I could. I got this thing to slide closed, this new, this new one to slide closed and it actually closed. It even popped up into the vent position, and now it opens and closes in the vent position, but it will not slide back, 
which is fine by me. That's cool. I could get a little ventilation here, and that's great. I don't have to worry about this sliding back there and getting stuck. So I'm just going to use this thing as a little vent, open and close, and that's it. Um, it's a nice feature, but boy, do I hate it. Can't forget about this dead pedal. This is great. I love it. Your foot is so comfortable when you rest it on there. XJs don't have that. Neither do WJs. While I'm still chilling inside this vehicle, actually, I'm not chilling, I'm sweating. Take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Memory seat buttons. I hate these. All right, so it's not so much the memory seat buttons, it's what the memory function does. Now, I wasn't able to activate the memory seats in this ZJ. I got a limited track which had the memory motors, but one of them was busted, so I never installed the memory seats. ZJ power seat with the memory function, but I did activate the memory mirrors. I got myself some limited mirrors. You can tell because the limited mirrors are painted. happened was you would unlock the vehicle and I guess it would signal the PCM uh, to go into a, um, a memory setting and because the mirrors have contacts that get dirty as you can see they're very tiny they're very brittle these contacts touch those little strips and this is what tells your Jeep where exactly your mirror is so if it's not where it should be it will adjust until the contacts line up in the spot where you set it at the mirror would just go up and to the right. So every time I got out of the vehicle, I had to readjust the mirror. I know you guys ask me about that all the time. It's just dirty contacts in the mirror. Watch my video, you will see how to take it apart and fix it, but that drove me absolutely banana sandwiches. I couldn't stand it. Uh, let me show you what it looked like every time I got in the vehicle. Here we go. Press an unlock on the key fob after it was armed. <laughs> that's annoying so to fix that you got to take off the mirror take it apart get to the motor clean the contacts my video can help you out with that if you really want to fix it right or you could just pop off this door panel and unplug the memory function switch um, <laughs> it's a it's a creature comfort that you don't need really I mean it's a Jeep and it's 25 years old so whatever I hate that mirror error so Next. All right, another thing that I hated about this ZJ was the GDM, the graphic display module. So here we have the GDM, graphic display module, and it's exactly what it says. It's a graphic display. We got a picture of the Jeep, and we got full-time. So far, all this has done for me was say full-time, part-time, or nothing. Just uh, these two rear wheels lit up, and that's it. Now this is a VIC. I couldn't stand the GDM so much that I went out and replaced it, got myself a VIC. Now, I love this thing. It's a vehicle information center and it tells you a lot about your Jeep. These VICs can do a whole lot more. They show you taillights out, brake lights out, headlights out, doors ajar, coolant levels, washer fluid levels, uh, all, all the stuff that um, the GDMs can't. The problem with the VIC is they were made with lead-free solder, which is kind of crappy. And over the years, the solder joints bust. Check that out, guys. Right there, you can see. I think that is the ground pin. And the solder joint is busted. And uh, it took a lot of work, but I got one that's functioning perfectly now and uh, I love it. Uh, I love that old school look, those nice big letters, tells you the time and date with the doors open, the doors closed, all that other stuff. Uh, there is uh, a very annoying problem. This bad boy, right in here is the lift gate switch. Now when this thing goes bad, uh, when the window jiggles around, it will say that it's open and you will get that annoying VIC beep. Oh, yeah, that's annoying. <laughs> it's just really, really annoying. Oh my gosh. Well, the beeping sound is making me hate the VIC, and the lights flickering on and off is making me hate drive at night. And it says the hatch or real lift glass is open, but clearly it's not. It will drive you crazy. What this will also do 
will set off your alarms at night. When the lift glass is closed and you arm the vehicle, if you have a stormy night and the wind wiggles your glass, it is gonna set off your alarm and drive you crazy. And while we're on the subject over here, I just love this flip glass. It's, it's amazing. Gives you ventilation, gives you access. It's great, can't beat it. It was brilliant that they put it on a ZJ. I love it. Uh, it may trigger alarms and whatnot, but uh, that's neither here nor there. It could be a, a GDM problem or a VIC problem. It could be a flip glass problem. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on the flip glass and the VIC. Um, you love it. You hate it. Uh, it is amazing when it works properly. Go figure, guys, right? As we get one more look at our VIC, go ahead and close that door. Check this out. Here's another thing I hate about this ZJ. We're going to turn this vehicle off and take out the key, right? Watch this off key out right 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 wrong it's still on oh yeah look at this it's not in the off position this is the off position right here in line with this nub that's when you're supposed to take your key out a lot of times you can over rotate and this is out something's wrong with this tumbler now it's probably not just a ZJ thing. It's probably just a Chrysler tumbler issue. But uh, this, this little key problem caused a whole lot of problems. And I'll explain why right now. So this ZJ has been fantastic. I got it for free. It owes me nothing. I made some money on YouTube fixing this baby up. And I was so blessed by this thing, I figured that I would just pay it forward and bless other people with this. Um, it is an extra, ve extra vehicle, so I don't need this every single day. I got my XJs, my wife's got the Commander, all that good stuff going on. So yes, I let people borrow this Jeep, people in need. Uh, my sister ordered a new car when her car died and uh, the, the shortages lately, it didn't let her car arrive months and months and months later. So she used this thing. A friend of mine, his car broke down and needed major repairs. So he used this for a couple of weeks. The church missionaries came to town and they were back in the States from China. They couldn't be in China because of all that other stuff going on. Uh, they used this car. My dad rolled his expedition. So while his car was smashed and while we were building Rec J for him, he used this car. Uh, my brother came up to uh, from, from the military, he came home, uh, he had stuff to do on the base, so he used this thing when he was here. I I've lent this vehicle out to so many people and uh, just about every single one of them killed the battery because they over rotated. I even gave them a warning, you know, hey, make sure the key is in the right spot when you, when you take it out. But uh, eh, once, once the battery dies the first time, then they listen. But that stupid thing, <laughs> it, it kind of inconvenienced every single person that this vehicle blessed. So guys, if you drove this thing and had the battery die, I'm sorry, but uh, I hope you enjoyed <laughs> the free Z. But yeah, uh, that is a huge problem. I guess I can fix it with a new tumbler, but then uh, I gotta have to go to a locksmith and get the keys matched up and all that nonsense. It's just, it's just easier to get used to it and uh, not pull the key out when it's over rotated. So that little thing was a huge problem that I hate. Boo. All right, so we mentioned before how much I love this ZJ interior. Well. One of the things I hate about it is, uh, is these things. <laughs> these little nubs, they always break off right here. Uh, why are these significant? Because these hold in the headrest. And I do a lot of work with the ZJs, as you know. Um, to put the seat down, you gotta transfer the headrest into this little guy right there. Then you can put your seat down, it folds down, but you gotta you gotta turn one of these nubs to lift it out the other one breaks off and that's just a pain in the butt so 
I don't like that, even though I love these seats. They're super comfortable. Um, another thing that kind of perplexes me, um, not to make a mountain out of a molehill, but this 60-40 split is fantastic. It's even better in the Niners because they have a cup holder that comes down out of here or an armrest, so that's awesome. But the 60-40 split leaves the small seat behind the passenger. Now, if I'm loading this thing up, I would find it beneficial if the 60-40 split was on the other side. You put the small seat behind the driver, this way you could fold down the 60 portion and have yourself a lot more room folded down. Now maybe the reason why they wanted the small side adjacent to the driver is if you have a car seat, you put the car seat on the small side and the driver can see the child. I don't know, makes sense. I guess kids are more important than stuff. So let me know what you guys think. All right, we're making our way back to the flip glass once again. I love it. Flip glass is fantastic. And check out this privacy screen. I love this privacy screen. Got access to all your stuff down there. And just like that, it can disappear. Now, I had a privacy screen in my 1988 XJ. It was a limited. It came with a privacy screen. You pulled it back just like this and it looped into things that were screwed in the cargo hold on either side this is really weird and i don't like it let me show you close this bad boy up let's pretend it's the daytime and we had stuff in here all you got to do is open up your lift gate boom full access to all your stuff right here but it's kind of strange that it's connected to the lift gate. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't a problem per se. You still have access to your flip glass right here. Everything's still nice and neat. And once again, we'll open this baby up so we can see. Actually, you know what? It could be kind of an inconvenience if you had bad struts, but this is fine. Everything's up and we got our stuff down. But watch what happens when it's nighttime. All right, we're cracking open our lift gate. You can see the cargo light is on, and underneath it, pitch black abyss. You can't see anything under here. Yep, that's right. This privacy cover completely blocks your cargo light, and it's pitch black in there. You can't see anything. So here's what you end up doing. You say, oh, I gotta go get my stuff out of the trunk, and you go get it. It's pitch black. You're like, oh crap. So what you gotta do is open this, then you send this back, then you close the glass, and then you open it again, and you can see everything illuminated in your trunk by your cargo light. Well, this remains retracted, so it's not flapping. Now, my solution for this poorly lit cargo area is this. This is a commander interior light, and what I was gonna do with this I was gonna cut a hole through the metal behind here, uh, through the trim right here, and install this light from the Commander. This has the exact same functions as this cargo light. It's also got the same wires. It's got the same plug too. But I was just gonna run some wires up the pillar, right up here to the cargo light. I was gonna splice this in, pop that in right there. This way, when you open the lift gate, and this is stuck right there, you got your very own cargo light illuminating the trunk space. So that would take care of that if I had time to do it. But let me just pop this in right here in case someone wants to do that at a later date. So yeah, I really hate the design of the privacy screen integrated into the lift gate, but it's really cool to have. They're very rare. If you could get one, I highly recommend you obtain it. And when I'm using the cargo space, and not the privacy screen. I just kind of shove this right here behind my spare, like so, and this way, this doesn't get in your way. You could put big boxes, tools, air conditioning, scrap stuff, two by fours, whatever, you name it. ZJs are good to go with hauling. All right, guys, here we go down to the nitty gritty. The number one thing that I hate the most about ZJs is these cup holders, <laughs> that's right. These things hold nothing. 
everything spills. Every time you make a right hand turn, the momentum shifts and sends what's in these cup holders this way, spilling out the contents into your park brake or on your seat or all over the place. It's a mess. I hate it. They suck no matter what is in here, whether it is a Poland spring bottle, a discontinued Red Bull cranberry, brake clean, delicious Sea Force Chuck Norris water, or even an ice cold beer. Nothing stays in these cups. Unless you are able to find one of these babies. Look what just came in the mail. Check this out. This is a very hard to find ZJ cup holder. <laughs> Look at this. Go ahead and put your bottle right in there. And look at that. It grips everything. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that footage that I just inserted when I was doing research on these cup holders. I did find that piece on eBay. I bought it. It should be coming hopefully within a week or so. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it because uh, I have some sad news for you guys. I'm selling the ZJ. Not because of any of the stuff I told you that I hated about it. I think it's just time I found the perfect buyer. He's actually flying in this afternoon and uh, he'll be taking this home. So let's give a quick walk around. We'll go say goodbye to the Grievous properly. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H. And today on the project, I proudly present to you this 1998 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This Jeep was donated to the channel as our new project car. That's right, free ZJ. Fell on me. That <laughs> truck just rolled right out. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Here we go, guys. General's back. Right now, I am in the General Grievous ZJ. I am not in the child's clubhouse. I just left Home Depot and I packed this thing out full of wood. We still got a lot of work to do on the General Grievous. <laughs> awesome. Hey, General Grievous. Looking good. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no! Um, you're a dude. Something about this really upsets me. You know what? Star Wars. I bet you George Lucas drove a ZJ, and that's how they got the idea for General Grievous's face. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for this video. That's going to do it for the General Grievous on the channel. I love this thing and it's nothing to do with stuff I hate about the ZJ. It's just, it's time for me to move on. Uh, I fixed this thing up, gave it a new life, and I found a great owner for it. Someone that's going to love it and cherish it. And uh, the ZJ will live on. 
I got a lot of projects going on, guys. I got the beach Jeep that I really want to focus on, and I don't want this to sit and rot any further. Oh my God. Holy sh I know it's gonna be uh, a great vehicle. It's gonna live on, and it's not gonna get shredded or scrapped or crushed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy where it's going. So. Uh, all you ZJ guys out there who watch this channel, uh, don't unsubscribe. Uh, I really want to get a Niner, another ZJ in the future. Uh, it's going to take me a while to find the right one and accumulate some money to pay for it because, uh, as you know, these things are getting more and more valuable. But uh, yeah, um, feel free to go ahead and watch all the ZJ videos again. Hopefully by the time you catch up on all of them, you binge watch them, I'll get another ZJ here on the channel. Um, yeah, so that's it guys gonna close this one out. I guess I do have one more ZJ part to sell It's gonna be that cup holder insert when it comes uh, I'll just uh, put that on eBay, I guess and uh, That's it. So um, yeah, can't wait to get that insert that in the footage and complete this video But that's it by the time you see this ZJ will be bye-bye. So bye-bye General Grievous I love you. You have been a great vehicle Thank you for keeping me safe, and uh, thank you for your many blessings, and uh, yeah, that's it. All right, guys, today is the day. We got Joe Craven here. Joe, where can we reach you on your YouTube channel? Uh, Craven Adventures. Craven Adventures, guys. If you want to see uh, version 2.0 of General Grievous, go to Craven Adventures' YouTube channel. He is going to take it from here. We're going to pass the torch to Joe. So this is the last you will see of General Grievous in its stock state. So yep. you're going to prepare to travel how many miles? 1,000? 1,200? So we're moving about 13, almost 1,400 miles to Kansas. It's going back home to Kansas in and, the Grievous. Uh, yeah, and then we're going to go and uh, give him my my ZJ treatment. This is Catherine. My, my ZJ's name is Catherine. And I, General's going to get the Catherine treatment. So big lift. Probably Dana 44s, maybe 60s. Long arms. Long arm kit. Yeah, Long baby. Arm kit. He's he's gonna get set, suited for uh, overlanding, and maybe some rock crawling. He's gonna travel the United States. Um, but actually, mostly the Americans. We're gonna go to Canada, South America. We're gonna try to do the, the Trans American Highway. So uh, eventually, we'll have him driving all the way down to Peru. Wow. So he's gonna he's gonna travel with Catherine, my Jeep, with my family. Once we get them all set up, so, yeah. so basically everything you guys wanted to see on the Grievous, Joe's gonna take over from here. So that's it, man. Yep. I appreciate you giving the Grievous a new home, a good home, a worthy home, and that's it. Uh, let's close this video out. Uh, like and subscribe, Dan H and Joe, Craven Adventures, Craven Adventures. and uh, we'll see you on the next project. Yep. Peace. Bye. <laughs> Joe, have a great trip home, brother. I'll talk to you soon, man. Call me when you get home. Right. <laughs> Later.